Hey guys, back again with a new setup here. I'm redoing my shelves and moving them around. Um, so if you see some videos in advance on this channel have the old setup, that's why. Um, because I've already pre-recorded a couple reviews. But uh, today let's talk about Falcon the Winter Soldier, episode 4. And uh, I'm a couple days late again, but that's because this week I was at a film fest. So I watched the episode, I think Friday in the day? So it's only Sunday when I'm recording this, um, and I'll try to get it up Sunday night um, before Monday. But uh, but I've, I've got a couple days a couple days late again this week, but that's just because again I've been busy with with the film fest. So Falcon and Winter Soldier episode four, a lot of shit went down. I like the fact that you get all the serum destroyed except for one vial, which uh, John Walker conveniently gets and uses to his advantage. Um, and I'll say the ending in a second, but I, but I really liked where that went. I like the fact that you get um, more of the Dorma J, Dorma J. Um, I'm saying that wrong. The uh, the group of the group of henchmen in Black Panther, the ones that are the the guards to Black Panther to T'Challa, um, and Io who is the person who, in the last episode, Bucky meets at the end of the episode, and she says, like, I'm here for Zemo. Um, and in this episode, he's, he's got eight hours before Zemo is apprehended by them. But uh, but I really like the fact that you get a flashback where, right before Infinity War happened, um, Bucky gets rid of that hypnotic trance that he goes into whenever you say those sayings. That Zemo always said in Civil War, where like Buck, he would say these to Bucky, and then Bucky would go and be a killer, um, be the Winter Soldier. And I thought that that was really awesome to see the fact that he got rid of this tick that Bucky had, because I was wondering, in Civil War, I mean, I guess Zemo wasn't there, so it didn't really matter. But I was like, did he get rid of that? Like, because he could just turn on a whim if like somebody knew those words that that Zemo said. Um, but I really like the fact that you see that Io did that and she helped him out. And honestly, it's weird because Okoye was the only one I remembered more in Black Panther out of the group, the Dora Majay. Um, and Io, I remember her saying the one line in Civil War, like, back up whenever, like, they're at the airport. Um, but I liked that this Io character gets a little more in this episode because I didn't know much about her, really. Um, God, my nose is itching. Sorry. Um, I didn't know much about her in the, in the other stuff. So it's like, where, like, I like that they gave her a little more to do. And I like that she was the one that made Bucky go back to revert to normal. I think that was a good, good thing for a character that you didn't know much about Io. So that's cool that you, they elaborated on her more. And, uh, I think that's awesome. I think that's great. I like the fact too, that you get a good fight between, um, John Walker and the Dorma J. Um, just, well, two people, Io and another woman. But, because of course Okoye is not here. I wonder if they didn't have, like, they couldn't afford Denai Gu Guerra. I don't, I don't remember how to pronounce her last name, but um, Denai. I don't know why they didn't bring her into the show. And it's this Oyo character instead, Oya. So I don't know why they didn't bring her in. But regardless, it's two of the Dorma J fighting off... Um, John Walker. And I really like that fight. That's really well done. The action in this, again, like, for a TV show, just, of course, the budget's bigger than a TV show. Just like WandaVision. Because Marvel is on such a roll that they can afford that. But, uh, but I really liked what they're doing with this. And a lot of it, the fight in this episode was hand-to-hand. -hand. Like, it wasn't as much CGI. It was just hand-to-hand -hand fights between... John Dorma J. I thought that was great. I really, really enjoyed that. I like the fact that Bucky's arm gets, like, knocked off because the Wakandans didn't trust Bucky. And, of course, they needed to not... They needed to be able to not trust him and have her... Have Io revert him back. So they had a safe keep just in case and have Bucky's arm broken off if, like, they do a certain thing to his arm. I thought that was awesome. Um, I like the fact that the episode ends in the best cliffhanger so far. Um, every episode of this show has had good cliffhangers. I've liked them all. But, man, this one... So, John Walker, um, his friend gets killed. I'm blanking on the name of the, of the friend. But, friend gets killed. John Walker takes a serum. 
um, he fights a flag smasher and literally just smashes the flag smasher to death, like, on a fountain, like, outside in, in broad daylight with a group of people. And everybody records it, and it shows a shot of John Walker as Captain America there with blood on the bottom of his shield, um, which is a great shot. That's a really cool shot for a Marvel. Because I follow this thing on Twitter where it's, like, one perfect shot, and I've also fo followed Marvel perfect shots. Um, and I thought that that's one of them. That's one of the best... Uh, perfect shots in a Marvel show or movie so far we've seen. That's a great shot. Um, it gives you everything in one shot. That's awesome. I really, really dug that ending, and I like the fact that I looked it up after the episode, and whenever you had Captain America, the first Avenger, where Steve was talking to Dr. Erskine, and Dr. Erskine tells him, like, whenever you have... Whenever you take this serum, the good gets better, and the and the bad gets worse. Like if you're a bad person or if you're a person who's angry, like you're, it's going to get worse for you, just like if you were a good person and did good things. So John Walker, of course, being the douchebag he is, uh, did that, and he just decimated this guy. And you don't see any real, like you don't see him actually impale or hurt this guy with the shield, but you might as well have, just with the impact and the strong force that you saw him knock him on and then you just see blood on the ground next to his hands. I was like, that is artfully done, especially for a Marvel show, which is more way more kid friendly than than I think it should be. I think they should have some more Marvel stuff that's a little more darker in the MCU. Besides the Netflix shows cuz they don't really say that they're they are connected, but I don't know if they like it's weird the TV shows say they're connected, the Netflix shows, but the movies haven't really ever referred to any of the Netflix shows. Um, from what I remember, but they're the only real, really violent uh, Marvel stuff in the universe. Apparent, like, I guess because, like I said, they they never fully say that in the Netflix show. They do they do reference the Marvel universe overall, but the movies never reference the Netflix show, so it's weird. But this is the darkest one in like the the Disney Marvel, and not the Netflix Marvel, um, even though they're supposedly connected, but. I really liked that. I thought that was great to see to see that fact that you get now a Captain America that has killed a man straight up. Um and he has killed a guy that he that wronged him, but like on camera it is not gonna look like that to the modern audience. Um the audience is not gonna take that and think that this John Walker guy did a good thing. Or a thing as re as revenge against killing somebody. Like, I really thought that was awesome. Because now they're in a really big dilemma. Of the fact that you've got the new Captain America just murdered somebody. Like, in plain daylight. I think that's awesome. Just where they went. That's really great. Um, but I really, really loved the episode. I thought it was great. I really liked the fact, like I said, it just it keeps getting better. And it keeps elaborating more on these characters. Um, it's weird. I didn't say much about Bucky. Um... Or Zemo, really much at all? Like in this one, I mean, besides Bucky getting the, um, getting the arm taken off, I guess actually I did talk about with him and Io, um, but I didn't talk about Sam Wilson that much. That much. Like Sam had a good conversation with, um, I forgot her name, but she's the lead flag smasher. Um, like saying you don't need to do this. Like he was a very, he did a very good job. Acting and character-wise, like, the character did a great job of telling um, the lead Flag Smasher what, like, why are you doing this? Like, I liked how he smooth-talked her into it and, and was really apparent about it, and I really liked that. Um, so I did like everything that the characters went through in this episode, especially the end, which is a big dilemma going forward. Um, that's going to be an awesome, just, where are we going to go next with this? Because it feels like the biggest cliffhanger uh, in the show so far, uh, for the next episode, so I really enjoyed the episode, um, pretty much all I could say, um, talked to a good nine minutes about it, so that's it for today, and I'll see you guys later, take care.